You can know for sure that you are going to heaven. Nobody can know for sure that they are going to heaven. Right? Wrong. I guess we'll have to wait till we get there to find out. Right? Wrong. If my good outweighs my bad. I'll probably go to heaven. Right? Wrong. To make a presumption that what you have been taught all your life must be true, especially concerning the destination of your eternal soul, is the epitome of foolishness. Your soul is the only possession you have that is eternal, your wife, husband, children, house, cars, money, possessions, beauty, health, etc., are all temporal. Nobody can, ever has, or ever will be able to possess these forever. Your soul, however, lives on forever in heaven or hell. See Luke chapter 16 verses 19 to 31. Do not take chances, do not trust in what man tells you. What does God have to say about salvation and going to heaven? That is what is important. God's clear promises. Why was the Bible written according to this following verse? These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. 1 John chapter 5 verse 13. God wants you to know that you have eternal life. John chapter 5 verse 39 says, Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Do not trust in clergymen to do your searching and interpreting of the scriptures, what if they are wrong, it is your soul, Jesus said search yourself. Proper interpretation is not for a few clergymen, Baloney, the Apostle Paul, while in Rome, reminded a young man named Timothy, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus, 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 15. Timothy knew the holy scriptures from his childhood. He was taught them, not by clergymen, but by his grandmother and mother, see 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 5. God wrote the Bible so every person on earth could read it and find out what he requires for us to have eternal life. We can know for sure that we are going to heaven. It is mental torment to have to go through life wondering if we are going to make it to heaven or if we will end up in hell. A God of love would not want us to be mentally tormented and live in fear and uncertainty all of our days as hostages to some unknown demands of his. His demands are known. If you will do what God says you must do to go to heaven, you will be saved and know it. Oot oh, we are in trouble. God demands perfection, holiness and righteousness. On the other hand, this is what the Bible says of us. There is none righteous, no not one, Romans chapter 3 verse 10. There is none that doth good, no not one, Romans chapter 3 verse 12. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, Romans chapter 3 verse 23. For we are all as an unclean thing and all of our righteousness, good works, are as filthy rags, Isaiah chapter 64 verse 6. It does not matter how good you think you are, the best person reading this article is nothing more than a sinner like the rest of us. And the person reading this who has done the most good works, they are nothing more than filthy rags to God. The penalty, sin is a big joke today. Just watch TV, God never has laughed at sin and never will, it cost him his son's life. That is serious, the Bible says, the wages of sin is death, Romans chapter 6 verse 23. All of us are sinners and will pay the wages, beyond physical death, the scriptures teach, the soul that sins, it shall die, Ezekiel chapter 18 verses 4, 20. God's word teaches that death has two parts, physical death and eternal separation from God in a lake of fire, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Revelation chapter 20 verses 14 to 15. Jesus paid our penalty, knowing that we were sinners. Lost, hopeless and totally incapable of saving ourselves, Jesus died for our sins. He paid our death penalty in full. He was your substitute. You should have hung on the cross. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 18, Christ's suffering was once for all. Why? That he might bring us to God. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, Romans chapter 5 verse 8, God loves you. If God never does another thing for you as long as you live, he has already proved that he loves you by sending his son to die in your place for your sins on the cross, for God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John chapter 3 verse 16. When was the last time someone died for you? That is love. You must accept Christ as your Savior. If you could earn your way to heaven, then why did Christ have to die for you? No, you cannot earn your way into heaven by your good works. Consider Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 to 9, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The question, what must I do to be saved? was asked in Acts chapter 16 verse 30. Acts chapter 16 verse 31 gave the answer, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Romans chapter 4 verse 5 says, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Quit working and start trusting. It is not what you can do that will save you, but what Christ has done. Are you believing on him alone, or are you trusting in yourself or religion? Have you received Christ as your Savior? John chapter 1 verse 12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name. Therefore, being saved is an event, not a lifelong process. I am the door. By me if any man enter in, he shall be saved. John chapter 10 verse 9. Jesus said it. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. John chapter 14 verse 6. If you are going to heaven, it is through accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior only. Matthew chapter 7 verses 13 to 14 teaches us that there are many ways to hell, but only one way to heaven, and Jesus is the only door. Jesus Christ could not do any more to save you and to show his love for you than what he has already done. Now it is up to you. Will you accept him as your Savior or reject him? When you stand before God's judgment seat, he is not going to ask you, how good have you been? He is going to ask you, what did you do with my son, Jesus Christ, who died for you? Did you receive him as your savior or reject him? Do not gamble with your soul. Ask Jesus to be your savior. God is everywhere. Wherever you may be as you read this, God is there. God says to you, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans chapter 10 verse 13. Do it now. Do not wait, for tomorrow is uncertain. Be saved and assured for behold, today is this day of salvation. 2 Corinthians 6-2 To receive Christ as your Savior, believing, pray. Heavenly Father, I am sorry for my sin. I repent. Have mercy on me. I do today receive Jesus Christ as my personal Savior from my sin and its penalty. I believe He died for me and was buried and rose again and trust today in His sacrifice and shed blood for the forgiveness of my sins. Please give to me the free gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name, Amen.